Hi, I'm Rex Beanland with this week's painting demonstration. And uh, this week uh, we're going to do this portrait of um, Grey Owl. In this portrait, uh, what attracted me to it was the fact that it's overall, it's really dark and mysterious and a lot of his face here is sort of covered by the shadow under the uh, the hat brim. In, in terms of the portrait, the lights are, I'm identifying the lights as this nose and the cheeks and the chin. There is variation, same in the mid. There's some of the mid values are a little lighter, a little darker, but in terms of my thinking, light, mid, dark. I'm going to choose some phthalo blue. This is dioxazine purple and quinacridone rose. So that's going to give me a nice variety in the blue violet and red violet side. And I'm going to go for one color that's sort of opposite. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get, I'm going to wet all of the gray area, or part not gray areas, all the areas that are going to be mid value. To this hat, so I want to stop right at the edge of the hat brim. And I'm going to go right over this background and I'm going to, I've actually sketched on here sort of the shadow, the mid value areas. I'm going to go right over the eyes, right, go right over everything. To my uh, half inch flat. Okay, I pretty much got that covered. I'm going to, it, because it's this paper's on an angle, it's already drying at the top, so I'm going to just take a minute to keep it uh, wet. I should point out, uh, because I was asked to, And I want to just really flood in color. And I'm going to have to do it a few times because I want it to be to be fairly dark and I know it's going to lighten up tremendously. So I'll start up here. And I just just going to keep varying the color, so I'm going to add some dioxazine purple. And we might as well start in and add some of the other color, some quinacridone rose. And I'm going to add some of my sort of complementary, the, the yellow, right around particularly around the nose and the face area here. Little quinacridone rose around the uh, the interface of those two. It uh, hope will make it more interesting in the final analysis. Now I just want to have a nice blend of color everywhere, and this when this dries, it's not going to be nearly dark enough. So I'm going to come in and 
me in some more. Now this hat is going to be, I know is going to be the darkest area. And to me, and as I, I mentioned, but I haven't done, I'm going to just ignore this background just so everything's got a real good chance to run and mess around. This, this time, this particular phase of painting in this style where it's really wet and I cannot be worried about detail because it's in, the water will not allow me. But I don't want all this stuff down here to be uniformly the darker, cooler colors. So I'm going to add some quinacridone rose there. And I think I'm going to add a little bit more up in here. Again, I can I know this is going to be much too light in the final analysis. And down here he has a bandana on and that, so I'll start even at this stage playing with some of those uh, shapes in there. to see my uh, pencil drawing through all this, hopefully. Now I can come in here and lift out with a thirsty brush and I can see for one thing This hat is not going to be nearly dark enough, so I think I'll add a little more dioxazine purple in there. Okay, now so I'm still letting this set up. Another thing I want to do is take advantage of the fact that it's really wet and start lifting out a few areas like the eyes it's in there somewhere and also under the eye there's a few areas that are lighter lifting out is, especially when people are beginning, is a, is a kind of neglected art, but it's, it's another area to give, another way to give yourself value contrast and keep everything very unified. And there's a bit of a highlight on the cheek here. I think what I'm going to do 
take a little of the quinacridone red and a bit of the yellow and I might as well do this do the lips in now Okay, so I'm still just monitoring things. I'm actually going to tip it because this paper is buckling, so this is kind of sitting in a pool. So I'll just tip it up for a second. Yeah, I don't know if you can see from this angle. So now this is running over the hill. And this, just get this eye a bit more. I'm actually going to take now, um, this is a, actually an oil brush, a bristle brush that I just use for scrubbing because I don't want this shadow on the nose to have a hard edge. So I'll just come in and soften that and up there. And then I'll come this one here. Switch back to my half inch flat. Everything's still so wet that the paint is flooding in. This lifting thing, it's seldomly can you do it in one go. You have to kind of keep at it as the paper's drying. My bigger brush. This is always a little bit scary because if, once you lose that moment of the right moment of in terms of the wetness of the paper you can start getting unexpected and unpleasant results but most of this is still pretty wet and should be fine okay down here i just i just don't want this to be now i'm overrun with thalo blue so bring a bit of the dioxazine in reinforce that edge And just get a little sense of some of the uh, yeah, this edge here is definitely. Going to be too dry or too light. I'm just going to let it dry, and and as I'm letting it dry, I'm going to just do some lifting out to refine some of these shapes. And just lift up more of that. Take some fresh water just to loosen up some of that paint. Some negative space in the hair. I want to have a little bit of a lighter area above the eyebrows. So we just it's almost like we see a little bit of light in that dark shadow. So 
I'll just lift that out now. I just soften this, even though it is dry, just so it's not going to be as hard. Yeah, that just breaks that up and gives a nice little effect. This paint's trying to creep back in here. And also a bit of this and maybe take a little bit out of this bandana. This, a lot of this painting is being done by lifting out.